Hallelujah. Won't you stand with me and praise God? Praise God from whom all blessing flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above. of a familiar passage of scripture found in Psalm number 34. If you've been paying attention, there's been a central theme that has reverberated throughout each of the songs that the choir sang this morning. It all had to do with a matter of rendering praise unto God. So it's apropos for what the Lord has given me for this morning. I just want to lift up a few words out of Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. You may take your seats. <clears throat> I will bless the Lord at all times. <clears throat> Thank you, ushers. A central theme permeated the songs lifted by the choir this morning. They each centered around the understanding that our God is worthy to be praised. And I want to talk about this matter for a few moments because in the last song, the choir made a statement that I want to offer you true praise. Since true praise, that is what I want to offer you. And, and so that song ties in very well to the subject matter this morning because I want to talk about the anatomy of praise. Yes, the anatomy of praise. Um, how do you, in fact, put together a structure, an infrastructure, a composition, an anatomy of praise that pleases God? I want to offer you true praise. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times, I want to offer you true praise. Most of us have no problem giving God praise as long as things are going well in our lives. As long as the bills are being paid, we're the first ones to shout. 
as long as the lights are on, as long as uh, the children are behaving, as long as things are going well in the home, we are quick to give God praise. But how do we handle this matter of praise when the storm clouds roll in? How does our praise stand up when our world is falling down? David says, I will bless the Lord, not sometimes, not in convenient times, not in the good times. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And if you're familiar with this passage of scripture, uh, you understand and know that even as David makes this declaration, uh, he is a fugitive on the run from King Saul. That uh, David's star had risen quickly. Uh, you remember how uh, when God got ready to choose his king for his people, that David was just minding his own business that uh, of the eight children of Jesse, uh, he didn't even come in from the field uh, and the oil wouldn't pour. And so Samuel says, is there another? Don't you have another boy? And sure enough, David comes in and the oil pours and David is anointed king. But listen, brothers and sisters, uh, his star was on the rise. Uh, he, he goes uh, to the palace and everything is going well. He is talented uh, with respect to music, uh, so much so that when he played, the Bible says how the evil spirit would leave the king. Uh, his star was on the rise. Uh, and you remember that episode in his life where the Philistine came against God's people and they were tormenting God's people and uh, God's people were afraid to deal with that giant Goliath. Uh, but this, this little man named David, uh, who God had anointed to be the next king, he comes along. And he understands that this Philistine giant is insulting not only God's people, but the name of God himself. And, and he says, this day, a God is going to deliver this uncircumcised Philistine into my hands. And you remember how the king tried to give David his armor and sword to go out and fight the battle. But David says, no, no, I, I haven't prove these things but uh, all I need is my little slingshot here and, and just a few, a few smooth stones and, and watch and see what God will do and you remember how he, he hit Goliath and Goliath fell and, and David took Goliath's own sword and cut off his head. David's star was on the rise and you remember how the people began to sing how uh, Saul had killed his thousands but David has killed tens of thousands David's star is on the rise he has every reason to give God praise but in this text he is a fugitive from God he is a man on the run because the king became jealous because the people began to praise David more than they did King Saul and Saul determined within his heart that he was going to get rid of David. And so now David is a man who is a fugitive from the king's justice. 
And he is yet in God's hand. And so he says, even though the king is after me, even though Saul is trying to kill me, God still has me in his care and in his concern. So he makes a determination that I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. David, brothers and sisters, he, he had days of both sunshine and rain, but he made it his determination that God is always worthy to be praised. And, and the question is, do you have a praise such as David's? Do you have a true praise so that even in the tough times, uh, you still come to church and praise the Lord? Even in the difficult moments of life, you still take your post in, on, in the choir, in the ushers group, and give God the service and the praise and the honor and the glory that he deserves. Because at all times, God is worthy to be praised. I was so excited yesterday when I had an opportunity uh, to speak to Sister Pruitt. She called to let me know that her brother had passed. And I asked her, was she doing okay? And she said she was doing all right because she understands and knows where her brother is. She said to me that he was a Christian and I know where he is. And that's the most important thing. And she said that if the Lord keeps me, I will be at church in the morning and so when i saw her come in i i, I saw a, a living example of her faithfulness toward god and her faith in god that even though her brother has been taken from this world she knows that he is present with the lord and and and, and he has done all that he could do on this side but god has kept me here i still have a duty to perform and so if god gets me up in the morning even though death has taken my brother away god is still alive god is still on the throne and I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I want to offer him true praise. Now, when we think about this matter of the anatomy of praise, when we think about the details of what it takes to uh, construct a praise, to build an infrastructure of praise that persists, that, that God is pleased with, that honors God. What, what David helps us to understand and appreciate is that firstly, our praise must be an independent praise. Our praise, brothers and sisters, must be an independent praise. He, he says that I will bless the Lord. He, he helps us to appreciate that his praise is not dependent upon person, or I should say people, or predicament. He has an independent praise that, not, that is not incumbent upon people nor his predicament. He says, I will. He makes a declarative statement. He doesn't know what others plan to do, but he says, I will bless the Lord. God, my brothers and sisters, is looking for full-time praisers. He's not looking for 
part-time praisers. He's looking for full-time praisers. And if you're going to be a full-time praiser, if you're going to have a praise that persists, if you're going to have a praise that is able to endure, you must have a praise that is established on the independence of people and predicament. He, 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 you, you, you have to understand, brothers and sisters, that the atmosphere might change but your attitude shouldn't change some folk can't praise God if the atmosphere isn't right they, they, they come to church and if the wrong preacher is preaching their attitude changes they, they, they determine I'm not going to bless the Lord on this day because he's standing and preaching. If, if, if the choir doesn't sing the right songs or perhaps the wrong person is leading the song by your estimation. Now, she knows that's so-and-so's song. Why does, why does she have her singing that song this Sunday? That, that's not her song. And, and, and so you can't get with God because of who's leading the song. There, there are some folk who aren't able to praise God uh, because they're more focused on the people and perhaps their own predicament than they are on the person of God himself. Your, your praise must be independent of people and predicament and your praise uh, must be established on, uh, predicated upon the person of God himself. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. David helps us to appreciate the fact that the focus of his praise is none other than the Lord God Jehovah himself. Yeah. David says, I will bless the Lord. I will bless Yahweh because he is worthy to be praised. When you uh, think about that term Jehovah, uh, it, it expresses brothers and sisters uh, the eternality of our God the eternal nature of God it speaks of his eternal isness uh, and, and so essentially what David helps us to appreciate is that we can in fact construct a praise uh, that is independent of other people and our predicaments simply because God is. And, and so what David helps us to come to the understanding of is that because God is, it really doesn't matter who and what isn't. As long as God is, you have reason to praise the Lord. It really doesn't matter if mama isn't anymore, but God still is. And so he's worthy to be praised. It really doesn't matter if brother or sister isn't on this side because God still is. He's worthy to be praised. It really doesn't matter if the job isn't anymore, but because God is a way maker, because God is a provider, because God is able to do exactly exceedingly abundantly above everything that we can ask or think it doesn't matter what plays out because God is he's worthy he's worthy to be praised because God is my shepherd he's worthy to be praised because God is my creator he is worthy 
to be praised because God is my redeemer. He is worthy to be praised because God is my company keeper. He's worthy to be praised because God is my way out, because God is my way in, because God is my way over, because God is my way through. He's worthy. Because God is my everything. He is worthy to be praised. He is my Jehovah Nisi. He's my banner of victory in battle. He is my peace. He is my joy. He is my strength. He is my hope. He is my all in all. Whatever you need, he is. If you need a doctor, he is. If you need a lawyer, he is. If you need somebody to hold you, he is. If you need somebody to carry you, he is whatever whatever you need he is and because God is it doesn't matter who is it the fact that he is means that he's worthy to be praised you ought to have a praise that is established on the isness of God because he eternally is you ought to have an eternal praise on your lips for God David has an independent praise but but notice also as we looked at look at this construct of David's praise that he also has an inexhaustible praise. He has an independent praise, but he also has an inexhaustible praise. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise will continually be in my mouth. Again, we, we unfortunately in church we have what I call situational shouters we, we have what I call picky praisers that as long as the sun is shining I'm shouting as long as the coffers are full I'll give him praise but brothers and sisters what David helps us to understand and to appreciate is that if your praise in fact is to be inexhaustible then your praise must be premeditated if your praise is to be inexhaustible you must have a praise that is premeditated. Look at this. The proper anatomy of praise demands, brothers and sisters, that you not base your praise on the appearance of your world, but rather on the appraisal of your God. If you're to have an inexhaustible praise, your praise must be established not on the appearance of your world, but instead on the appraisal of your God. Because when you look at the etymology of that word praise in the English language, it, it literally means, brothers and sisters, to set a price on. When you look at that word through English etymology, it, it means to appraise something and then set a price on it. And I would dare say that uh, the reason why some of us are incapable of 
praising God at all times is because our appraisal of God has come back too low. Yeah. Your, your, your appraisal of who God is has come back too low. And, and I'm going to step into my banker hat for just a moment because I'm familiar with this process of appraising properties. Uh, that uh, in the banking system, we, we have a couple of different ways that we appraise properties. Uh, we can go on a computer and we can pull into a geographic location and we can pull an appraisal of the comps for that geographical location. In other words, uh, we'll just go on the computer and based on uh, computer analysis of the houses in that area, we'll make a general determination of how much your house is worth based upon how much uh, the houses are worth with regards to your neighbors around you. Uh, that, that's called an electronic appraisal. But, but sometimes electronic appraisals come back too low because uh, they don't uh, see the full characteristics of the home. And so there are times when the electronic appraisal comes back too low in order to render a, a proper evaluation uh, that we will order a drive-by appraisal. And with a drive-by appraisal, we actually send someone out who has a trained eye to inspect the property. He or she will uh, go around the property. Uh, he or she will inspect the inside of the property in order to get a full appraisal of the property's true value and worth. And all I'm trying to get some of us to see this morning is that uh, you, your evaluation of God, your appraisal of God has come back too low because perhaps you have done an electronic appraisal. Perhaps you have appraised God based upon what Big Mama said. Uh, perhaps you have appraised God based upon what you have seen him do in the lives of others. But I encourage you uh, to drive by to inspect God for yourself and get a full appraisal of who God is. I encourage you to drive by and inspect God. I encourage you uh, to go back through the corridors of your mind and, and see who God has been in your life. See how many doors he has opened. See how many ways he has made. See how much trouble he has brought you through. See how God has been bigger than your enemy. See how God has brought you through turbulent waters. See how God kept you through the fire. See how God has been peace in the middle of confusion. See how God has been a friend to you when you were friendless. I just dare you to go back through and do a full-blown appraisal of who God has been in your life and say it was God that woke me up this morning and so he's worthy of praise. It was God who started me on my way. He's worthy of praise. It's God who kept me in my right mind. He's worthy of all the praise. Is there anybody in the house this morning who's willing to do a full appraisal and take a good look at God and who he has been in your life and then once you look at God and see what he's done in your life you make a determination like David I will I will bless the Lord 
at all times when I look at how good God's been even in the midnight hour he's still worthy to be praised even in the valley he still came through even at midnight he still made a way even when I was crying he dried my tears I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth that, that when you do a proper appraisal of who God is then that establishes the right platform where you can have the right anatomy of praise like David that says I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth you ought to have an independent praise you ought to have an inexhaustible praise but you ought to also have an engulfing praise you ought to have an engulfing praise I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth look what he says at the beginning of verse 2 my soul shall make her boast in the Lord that that's an engulfing praise my my soul shall make her boast in the Lord that word soul it's the word nephish in the original language and it encompasses the total man. Uh, Dr. Charles G. Adams, he says that the soul represents man's bones and teeth, his commitments, his, so, his society, his totality. And so what David helps us to appreciate is that if we are to render unto God true praise, that it must, it calls upon that, that, that you incorporate all you are and all that you've got. It requires, brothers and sisters, more than an emotive feeling. It mandates a mental moment of musing as well. If, if, if we are to praise God in a way that pleases him, God says, when you leave church, you ought to be tired. <laughs> not, not sleepy, but tired. Because you've given God all that you had. You jumped, you shouted, you cried, you screamed. You, you gave God everything. You ought to be tired and ready for a nap when you get home. You, you ought to have an engulfing praise. And, 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 and David he, 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 he's able to, to praise God in the midst of what he's going through because of God's consistency in his life. And, and if you have walked with God any period of time, regardless of your situation and circumstance, you ought to be able to give God praise, clap glad hands, say glory, hallelujah, because God has been so consistent in your life. 
Regardless of your situation, God always showed you love. Regardless of how good or bad you've been, God has always showed you grace and mercy. Regardless of how confusing things have been in your life, God has been your peace. God has been your joy. God has been your sustenance. God has been your keeper. God has been your provider. Because God has been so consistent in your life, you ought to give him an engulfing praise. You ought to pour out yourself on the altar of praise unto God because God has been so good in your life. David, he, he had several motivations for praising God. He says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. David said, the poor man cried and the Lord heard him and he saved him from all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord. David says, blessed is the man who takes refuge in the Lord. The lion suffer and hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want of any good things. David had his reason for praising the Lord. He says, the eyes of the Lord upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. David said, the Lord is near to those who are of a broken heart and he saves those who are of afflicted spirit. David says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. The Lord keeps the bones of the righteous so that not one of them is broken. The Lord redeems the souls of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. David had many reasons to give praise, honor, and glory to God. David had many reasons to tell God, thank you, because God God took him from tending sheep. God protected him from the lion and the bear. God kept him when Saul was trying to kill him. God elevated him to be king over God's people. David had many reasons to give glory, honor, and praise to God. And I just suspect this morning that there's at least one or two people in the house this morning who have many reasons to give praise and honor and glory to God. Just like David, you you wasn't nobody. You wasn't going nowhere. Nobody expected you to be anything. But look what God has done in your little black life. Look what God has done. Look how many doors he's opened. Look how many ways he's made. The white people downtown, they didn't want you to be where you are. They didn't want you to know what you know. But look what God has done. He just took us and molded us and made us into a people of God right here in this year. United States. Look what God has done for your little black girl. Look what God has done for your little black boy. You ought to give God some glory. You ought to give God some praise. It's not because of your intellect. It's not because of your ingenuity. It's because God has been good. It's because God has made a way. It's because God has brought you over. It's because God has brought you through. Don't you sit down and act like you can't praise God. You ought to give him all the glory glory you got to give him all the honor because he's worthy I said he's worthy you want another reason to praise God because when you were in sin he sent his son to die he came down through 42 generations he hung on a cross he bled for your sins he stayed in the grave Friday he stayed there Saturday but early Sunday morning he got up with all power all power all power and so I'm going to tell him thank you thank you for how you saved me thank you for how you raised me thank you for how you brought me thank you for everything you taught me thank you 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 for the rest of my eternal life hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. All of the glory. Real, true, 
genuine praise. That's what I want to offer. God bless you. That's what I want to offer. A praise. A praise, my brothers and sisters, that God is pleased with. A praise that is independent of people in predicament. A praise that is inexhaustible because it's established on the isness of God. An engulfing praise that requires you to recognize the fullness of who God is and praise him out of the fullness of who he has made you in Jesus Christ. The doors of the church open.